We started this program talking about investors buying in to stocks related to more conservative social media platforms. What's your interpretation of that reaction? Well, if we can look to history for a second, uh, Trump wouldn't be the, the first ex-president to, to face a trial. We had Roosevelt actually here in, in Syracuse and uh, back in the day, early 1900s, and it drew an intense media spectacle. OK, so I don't know if people are focusing on these, you know, uh, fringe uh, platforms, I think they're missing the point that uh, people aren't just going to be talking about this and following this on social media. There will be legitimate media interest. They'll want to read the news. So this could bring a spectacle like you would see with uh, O.J. Simpson and things like that, right? So I think Trump knows how to manipulate the media, too, and it, all eyes will be on that trial if, if, if it reaches that point. Jennifer, to point out what is a first right? A first former president to be indicted. But I, I, I hear your point on the news cycle. Twitter wants to be the place where the news cycle plays out. Do you think that's where this... <laughs> it, it used this... to be. <laughs> it used to be the place more where the news cycle you know, played out. But, you know, I, I, I still think that, that the platform has fundamentally changed since Musk took it over. Uh, you still don't have the same type of user base there that you used to see a lot of academics and journalists. Sure, so, some people are out there still, but not like you used to. So people may follow uh, more of the details, uh, you know, almost like a reality TV show there. But I don't think the same types of influential uh, you know, media folks are, are on Twitter like they used to be. How strong a landscape do conservative voices have in social media right now? How strong are those conservative specific platforms? I think we need to look at it more collectively um, as those who are in power. I know there's a lot of attention on, you know, what is Trump trying to cause a riot, but he's also an ex-president. Uh, I think we need to focus a lot more on the sitting president, on those in Congress. And again, that, that crosses political parties, right? And and looking at uh, the influence that they're exerting now, it's not just like, uh, is their voice being amplified more on this platform or that? But look at what's happening with TikTok, okay? And the ability to, to influence and potentially uh, shutter that app here in the United States. That is monumental. And we are really not talking about that enough. So that's, that's influence. And it, it cuts across, you know, conservative to you know, right, left. Um, it's a collaborative effort, as I see it right now, between the White House and Congress. So I'd be focused more on that if I was uh, looking at investments. Jennifer, have the risks to social media and use of social media changed since Trump left office? Yeah, I, I think, again, nothing has really changed uh, when it comes to how Presidents are using social. Um, if anything, you know, maybe they're exerting more influence on um, regulation and, and the ability to maybe shutter apps, as I mentioned before. But like, we have to keep in mind that censorship will look different here in the United States, and also just the increasing use of government social media. I, I just think that we need to to really address that uh, as a country, not just here in the United States, but around the world. Um, so for me. As a public, we really want these platforms and our media environment to, to function and be safe, regardless of who's in power. <laughs> and uh, and and I, I really don't think that uh, that risk has gone away under Biden or potentially future presidents, regardless of their party. So maybe some people are comfortable with, you know, kind of Democrats steering uh, some of the policy around social media right now. But we have to remember that they may not always be in power. So you really want your social media platforms, your media uh, environment to be a healthy one that is uh, just good for the public, good for discourse, good for democracy. And uh, I still I still see that that right. right here today.